Pro Football and Hollywood have enjoyed a long relationship, showing very different aspects of the game. Remember Brian's song, Heaven Can Wait, The Longest Yard? While all of those touched on different aspects of pro football, football as a business, that aspect came to light in the movie North Dallas 40. That movie also helped build the lore of the Cowboys. It was taken from the book by the same title. Its author and how his teammates reacted is tonight's Distant Replay. In the 1960s, Dallas, Texas was an emerging American city, and the Dallas Cowboys were an emerging power in the NFL. While war raged in Southeast Asia, and with political and social turbulence at home, a new breed of athlete was emerging as well. On the Cowboys, that athlete was Pete Gent, number 35. Pete was, uh, he was a new school. He was, uh... He was a deep thinker. See, he had it over guys like me. That's why you need long hair in those days, you know, to cover your brain. I didn't have a brain, so I had a crew cut. He seemed to be a very sensitive player. He seemed to be very sensitive emotionally. He seemed to have some tremendous skills. In the history of the Cowboys, uh, I think he was a tremendous plus for the few years he played with us. And then I think to some degree, he didn't relate well to the coaches. Like few before him, Pete Gent openly questioned the dehumanizing aspects of the game. A lot of what I was rebelling against and what upset me was the fact that we were the players. We've done everything we can when we've beaten our brains out. We're not getting paid a lot of money. We really played for the gratification. And part of that gratification really was ultimately won't somebody say thank you? You know, and, and nobody ever did. And it always used to just infuriate me. It was, I can remember Landry, Landry always had this theory that you never congratulate anybody, but you always point out in the team meetings who's letting everybody else down. That was Tom's theory of the, how you got adults to do things. And I always found that my teammates were pretty bright guys. I didn't feel like you had to treat them like children. But we didn't do it for the money. And, you know, ultimately, that's the way they had us all, is that we would have played for nothing. We loved to play. There was a different take on Pete Gent, the author, after his first novel, North Dallas 40. Tracing a week in the life of a fictionalized Dallas team, it dealt with violence, drugs, racism. Until then, issues hidden behind the closed doors of NFL locker rooms. It's the first time that anybody who played the game wrote about it in a candid way. He let people inside and let them see the things that they didn't normally otherwise see. And, and he did it in the context of, of a really compelling, dramatic story. I was uh, somewhat uh, leery about it because it was written by Pete Jen, and uh, he and I were not exactly like brothers, I'll tell you that. We, we didn't agree on a lot of things, and, uh, uh, but I, I was definitely interested. But uh, once I got into the book, I, I, I was shocked you know, where the information was coming from. I think everybody talked to Tom about it, you know, told him, you know, coach, you're reading something to Pete Jet Road, and he's out there trying to make a living, so, you know, what do you expect? A couple of prominent teammates uh, that I have a lot of respect for, well, basically their comments were, well, it was all a bunch of baloney, it's not true, and everything. It saddened me to think that, well, why don't you just tell the truth? <laughs> you know, why, why do you have to skirt the issue? I mean, it really did happen. You know it happened. I know it happened. There were a lot of negative reactions uh, to, to a lot of what Pete said instead of taking it uh, and examining it to say, you know, how much of this is true? And if it is true, that which is bad, let's see if we can, we can overcome that. And then came the movie. And with it, another wave of mixed reaction. The central character, played by Nick Nolte, was based on Gent himself. It was a constant battle between a Hollywood type of film and maybe a, a, a serious, poignant piece of entertainment about football. Not necessarily negative, but something that, that has some substance to it. When I sat through that movie, I cried. It was so real. Uh, everything uh, in that movie was so personal. Frankly, I was bored with the film. I, uh, I, I watched the entire thing, but after a very few minutes, I, I didn't relate to it at all. It was not football. It was not any kind of a game or personalities that I could ever relate to. People say, well, pro football is dehumanizing because it's a business, as if there's anything else it should be. We all have this notion of sport that it's our last refuge from our own insanity, so to speak. That's how at least it once was viewed. And we don't want to think that pro football is tainted, but it is. It is a business. But in my opinion, so what? Players don't realize 
what is happening when you're coaching a player, you know, that, that what's best for him. Uh, sometimes they don't realize that. They only realize it after they get out. And I think a lot of our players would say, yeah, I remember what you were trying to accomplish now. It was a miserable, stinking business the rest of the time. But on game day, it still had that pure quality. As I get older and older, I realize how rare that is in life. For me, I mean, that what it was like was uh, so intense and so exciting. And it, it, it validated me so. I was so real when I was doing those things. I knew I existed. I knew I was on the planet.